everybody. <laughs> <laughs> It's sunny over in Emeryville, isn't it? Nice day over there. Oh yeah, totally. What's the weather like in Santa Cruz? It's nice. Nice. Very cool. All right. I think let's get going here. I want to thank everyone for coming and joining us. And America Scores Bay Area is a three-prong approach. We have soccer poetry and service learning for after school for um, underserved youth. And so I, I'm gonna read a poem from one of our um, student, student poets. And this is called, This Is That. In soccer, I like scoring. I give the strongest kick to the ball. My coach is not snoring. The referee makes a loud call. I think halftime is boring. I just want to play and give it my all. The goalie blocks the shot. He is as fast as a cat. My cleats hit the ground, splat, splat, splat. I like soccer and that is that. That is by Imenya and she is in fifth grade. So she's just one of, that, that is one of our 45,000 poems written by um, poet athletes in the SCORES program. In the Bay Area SCORES program, we have over 2,200 poet athletes and we're in over 80 schools. I just wanna thank everyone for attending the SCORES Soccer Summit and especially give a shout out to our partners, um, Women in Soccer. They're a great uh, new organization, free membership. Everyone should join if you're any interest in soccer, a great way to connect. And goal five, which is going to be providing a giveaway for every session. So anyone in the audience, everyone has a chance to win. So I am very proud to um, introduce Leah, who is also a colleague of mine at um, Bay Area Scores and Erica, her teammate, and I'm gonna let them introduce themselves and foot volley and very happy to hear your session today. Awesome. Thank you so much to Alicia for organizing, Angela for doing the tech for us today. Um, yeah, I think we're both really excited and honored to, to be here. Um, and I, I don't know, Erica, if you want to do specific introductions or we'll have, I think we have like some interview questions back and forth and I think we'll kind of get to know each other that way. Um, I'll just do a little brief fee brief one. My name is Leah Morales. Um, I've been with America Scores for about six years. And um, yeah, that's, a, that's everything else I think will be in the interview. What about you, Erica? Hi, everyone. Um, thanks for being here. Thank you, Alicia. Thank you, Just Scores, for having me and um, providing this opportunity for Leah and I to speak on our experience playing football. It's super exciting to be here. Um, just a little bit about myself. Um, born and raised in the Bay Area, soccer player my whole life. Leah recruited me to this beautiful sport, which I've been playing for maybe three and a half years. Um, and um, I'm currently a psychotherapist in the Bay Area. So that's me. So we'll just jump right in with some questions that we have for each other. Um, Leah, why don't you start us off by talking a little bit about what is football for those of us who don't know? Yeah. Okay. So football picture, um, beach volleyball, but only soccer touches. So two people on a side on sand with a net in the middle and each person gets one touch and then three touch total. Um, and it was created in Rio de Janeiro in Brazil in the 60s. Legend has it that soccer was banned on the beaches at that time. And so people started to play like soccer over the nets, um, over the volleyball nets that were there. And it was initially like five aside, but it, it's, it's moved to two. Um, and it's, it's pretty funny whenever we play in um, 
Santa Cruz or where there's people walking by that have never seen it before, up where sometimes we play up in Berkeley on the courts uh, on campus. Um, people will walk by and say like, whoa, is that a real sport? Or um, one time we were in Oregon at a tournament and someone was like, what is that, Mexican volleyball? <laughs> or someone or someone's like, oh, that's like body ball. So we, I just love to hear all these different things that people call it. Um, and, and yeah, that's, that's, those are the basics. Cool. Was there anything else that I meant there again? Yeah. So I'm kind of, um, wanting you also to like, talk a little bit about like, what, like who plays vo uh, football, like what opportunities are out there for potential, you know, future football players who might be listening in, um, like, what does it actually look like right now? Um, yeah. You know, even in the context of a pandemic or maybe outside of that. Yeah, it's hard to say right now. We're not playing a lot right now. Um, and I mean, although there are some competitions still happening, it seems like, um, I don't think Erica and I are participating in those or plan to participate anytime soon. Um, but right now there are, there's like a national organization that does um, tournaments, they do tournaments in Miami and LA and San Diego and Baltimore and Houston. There's these little pockets of football -y fanatics that, um, that organize tournaments and, and bring together the community for those, for those weekends. Um, I also wanna say that uh, we did a tournament these last year Last summer was the first year that we hosted a, a series of small tournaments. And by we, I mean like the Bay Area crew. And um, I was kind of leading the charge on that. And um, we had one in Santa Cruz, we had one in Mountain View, um, all of which were really fun and successful. Awesome. So we do have a question in the chat and that actually leads into our next question. So. Leah, take it away and we'll address yeah. that question. Yeah, thank you for that question. Um, so I think that, I guess we'll start with that question, like how, how and when did you start playing, Erica? Um, and what are some of the highlights of your football league career thus far? Mm -hmm. um, so my start to football league happened when Leah approached me. Um, Leah and I had been playing on the same soccer team for a number of years. Um, uh, the Bay Area Breeze in the W League, as well as the, um, the Spurs, the East Bay Spurs in the WPSL. Um, and she approached me, she said, hey, um, the Olympics are happening this year in Brazil. And um, football is going to be a, um, a, a sport. In, in the Olympics this year. It's, um, I'm, not, I'm not recalling the exact word. It's like um, a demonstration. demonstration sport, exactly. And it's because it's native to the country in which the Olympics were taking place. And so, um, and so Leah said, hey, um, they're gonna uh, have, have an American team go to play in these Olympics. Do you wanna train and potentially go to Brazil? and play in the Olympics. And I was like, oh my God, what an opportunity. <laughs> sure, I'll try learning this brand new sport um, and potentially have the opportunity to go play um, in Rio. And, and so that's how I started. That's how I got roped in and I haven't looked back. Um, even though unfortunately I didn't end up going to Brazil that year, um, I, I did successfully get recruited as Leia's teammate, even though she she played with another female um, in Brazil. Um, so that's kind of the beginnings um, for me. And I would say um, just one, one or two highlights, one being the um, qualifying tournament um, to the Olympics, and that was a tournament in Oregon that took place that the National Football League Association held. Um, and it was my first official, maybe like four months in to training and like learning the sport um, opportunity to compete at, at somewhat of a high level slash competitive level. 
Um, that was a highlight and very exhilarating and, and an introduction to the community that exists. Um, and then the other highlight that comes to mind is um, the Santa Cruz tournament. I mean, Leia like almost single-handedly um, put that on in Santa Cruz. And that was just a really unique experience, like being her partner in that and also friend and support. Um, and to just see kind of the like the workings behind the scene on what it takes to put on an event. So that was a cool opportunity for me. So Leia, what's your story? How did you get introduced to foot volley? Yeah. Um, so I saw for foot volley for the first time in Santa Cruz. I grew up in Santa Cruz. Um, I think it was my senior year before, bef the summer before my senior year at Cal Poly. I played soccer there. And my brother and my ex-boyfriend, now ex-boyfriend, both played on the beach soccer national team. And they'd go to Brazil and they'd see this game and they brought it back. And I saw it and I was like, that is the coolest thing I've ever seen. And, and that's been it since then. But I, but after college, you know, I was still really focused on soccer until I played in Europe for a few years after college. Um, I played, like Erica said, on the breeze. Um, and so it was maybe seven years ago that it has been really um, like the primary thing that I was doing, less focused. Like I would call myself a football player now, less a soccer player, um, but that wasn't the case um, always. And then some of the highlights, um, I think, gosh, so many. Um, the Santa Cruz tournament was huge. Um, every time I go to Bra Brazil, it's just so, it's just so wonderful. And um, I can't really pick out like, and I think we'll get into this more a little bit later, but um, the distinction between like with soccer, the competitive, how competitive it is and how competitive I was and how professional I was with soccer versus the more focus on just joy and um, community with full volley and um so for me those are some of the the best moments even though I've like Erica said I've, I've played in that demonstration um event in Brazil I've also played in an event last summer in um Barcelona which was like some top players from around the world so that was really awesome as well but yeah every if you get to spend an all day on the beach playing full volley like that's a highlight for me for sure Awesome. Um, yeah, there's a couple more questions here. Did you want to go into those too, Erica? Um, the like the ones in the chat, or which ones are you talking about? Oh, ones that, oh yeah, I see there's ones in the chats as well, mm -hmm. in the chat as well. Um, let's see. Um, I guess, yeah, you've spoken to it a little bit, just in terms of how your relationship has changed over time. Um, and um, for me, um, it feels like because I've I've been playing for only three and a half years, it's it's pretty much remained the same. Um, you know, still still learning, still open to competing um, when and if there are tournaments. Um, uh, just to speak a little bit um, to my soccer career before foot volley, um, have played soccer my whole life. Um, after um, playing in college, I also went abroad to play and then came back um, to play um, with the Breeze and the East Bay Spurs um, and still play occasionally co-ed, indoor, futsal, you know, whenever I can, uh, although unfortunately not right now um, because of the pandemic. Um, so yeah, I guess um, if, we, if we skip down a little bit, um, uh, we have a question in the chat that we were going to kind of touch on um, a little bit um, from, let's see, Shira, who's been playing for a while in Israel, which is really cool. Um, I don't know if, Leah, you know this person or not. I know you've played in Israel. 
Um, but they say it's been easy because there's a lot of people there who play, but now they're in the Bay Area and there isn't much of a scene. Any tips on how to keep in football-y shape while being away from the beach or any groups in the area? My goodness. Well, okay, that's so awesome. Um, all of those things. Okay, so definitely when we start to get back together, like we'll have to stay in touch. Um, we'll have to get in touch. You should message me on Instagram or something and um, we'll stay in touch. I can put my, my Instagram on the, in the chat a little, a little bit later. Um, yeah, when we start to get back together, you should come join us whenever you're able, whenever we're able. Um, in terms of staying in football -y shape, while not being able to get at the, to the beach. I'm not sure exactly where you are. I know for me, I like to just take the ball and jug, and just juggle, just touch the ball, um, trying to do like touches that go over, at least over your head, um, because that's, you know, those little, the little shorter touches that we usually do in soccer, um, right? Because every touch in soccer, you want to bring down to the ground. Um, whereas in football, you want to get it at least higher than your head with every touch. So, so I think that's really important that, that your touches, whether you're doing the inside of the foot, the top of the foot, your knee, your shoulder, your head, like it should be at a height to where, um, it would be playable on a, on a football -y thing. So that's what I would say. Or, or a wall, like if you can go to like a school or a park that has a wall, <clears throat> that you can kick the ball off of. I think that's really helpful as well. Any tips, Erica? I mean, up against the same battle, right? Like here in the Bay Area, the beach is not the warmest, you know, place to be. Um, and, and so, I mean, Alameda is like somewhat of a beach in the East Bay, right? That will give you more of that like full sand experience, right? Like if you wanted to, do cone work or, um, you know, any sort of like sprints or quick sort of like, um, you know, uh, bursts, bursts of speed, right, as the game sort of um, asks you to make. But it's a challenge in the Bay Area because court space is so limited. That's, that's definitely something that we've been up against as a small football community, right, of finding court space because usually we're competing with all the football or the volleyball players in the Bay Area. Usually they have a stake um, or a claim to the, to the courts. And so, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a challenge. Um, but I think once maybe you get connected with us, we can, we can figure out how to, how to tackle that. Um, this actually leads into this, this question. Um, so how is the physicality of the game different than soccer? Like what does being in football shape look like for you? Like what is it like to play in the sand as a part as opposed to the hard ground? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this this was a huge adjustment for me. Um, because I was born and raised in an urban setting, San Francisco, and and rarely made it to the beach to like play or work out. Um, my uh, fitness has always been on hard ground. Um, so the sand, as, as many people are familiar, um, you sink before you go up, right? Like you go down before you go up. And, and so, um, it takes getting used to, right? Like the, just the speed in the sand and some of the Brazilians who would train me when I was first starting would tell me like, I'm taking too many small steps in the sand, almost like on the soccer field, right? Being mm -hmm. on your toes and being ready for, you know, balls in any direction. Whereas in the sand, you actually need to take bigger um, steps and your motions need to sort of be smoother and larger. Uh, mm -hmm. You don't need to expend as much like energy with small movements as you would on a soccer field. Um, so that was like, that is a continuing adjustment that I'm making in the sand. Um, also jumping, right, is different in the sand than on hard ground. So the timing is different because of it, right? Like the timing that you would think um, 
to hit a ball with your head is different when you're first actually sinking before getting any airtime. Um, so that needs to be trained in a new way. Um, and then to be honest, just the, the physicality of not wearing any shoes, right? You're barefoot playing this game. And so the, the ball's impact on your bare feet actually is really different than, you know, being in cleats or runners or, you know, turf shoes. And so that's my, my feet, literally the skin on my feet, right? Like the muscles in my feet. Um, my calf muscles, you know, they're being worked in a really different way that you wouldn't initially think about. And then when you're like meeting and learning the sport, it really is something that comes up. Um, so those are those are some things that I've I've experienced. I know Leah, it's a little different for you. Do you know? Do you know share uh, anything about? Yeah, you? I'll just share really briefly. Like I grew up in Santa Cruz. I grew up on the beach. So the sand, I would rather move in the sand than on hard ground. Um, so I feel pretty comfortable. And I'm, um, as I'm getting older, I, I prefer foot volley movement much more than soccer movement, hard ground, lots of running. That's all I'll say about that. Um, let's, I, we see your questions. Let's see if we can get, Erica, what do you think? Let's get through a couple more of our questions that we really wanna share with y'all. And then we can get to some of these that are coming, awesome questions that are coming in in the chat and Q&A box, does that sound good? Yeah, sounds great. So why don't we talk a little bit just about the mental side of the game and how it's different and, and or similar to soccer. Um, for example, like high intensity moments in a foot volley game. And maybe you could speak a little bit to the point system. Like how do the points work? How do the serves work? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Cool, yeah. So points go to, it's the first to 18, games are to 18 um, normally. And it's rally serving, which means that, or rally points, sorry. So that means that anytime like even if you, you can earn a point, even if you don't have the serve. Um, so if, even if you are receiving serve, if you get a point, you, yeah, if you had get a, what is it called? Side out or whatever, I don't know, in volleyball. Um, and the question is, what do you, how do you respond to high intensity moments? Okay, so like, for example, 17-17 or 16-16, end of the game, um, and it's, it's really intense. I think for me, it's, uh, it just takes an extra amount of focus. And I think at the level that we play at right now, especially it, it's about not, it's about making less mistakes than the other team, right? So, um, making them really earn the the right to have a point against you i think is is what i try to remember um i think the other thing in soccer that i that i like make a distinction between in football -y, like with soccer you make a mistake you make one bad touch and you can just keep going right you make a you make one bad touch and normally the other team doesn't score because of it um you can work your butt off, work really, really hard, run as fast as you can, make a good tackle and and no big deal. The, like there's no time to think about it. I think in football, you can make 16 mistakes, <laughs> your team can, but you can still win the game. Like every mistake, if it's a bad touch can have a really big Im impact. And you have to be able to like, let the game stops. You have to be able to let it go and and um move on from that which i think is a really interesting distinction that something that i've i've um, had to shift what about you erica yeah i love that you're mentioning like the um the continuity of play versus the stoppage of play like i think that's really different when it comes to like sports where there are two players and a net um, and, um, and, and because of that stoppage of play, it really does change the psychology of the game, right? Like sure in soccer, you have one halftime where you can regroup and you can, you know, get on the same page as your teammates, re-strategize and then go out there for the second half. Whereas, you know, you can take timeouts in football. I think like 
one or two are allowed during the game. Um, but ultimately, you know, it's like you, you, you're reflecting on each point as they're one, right? Like, so the, the pace and the relationship to you and your other teammate, right? You have not 10 players on the field with you, but one other person. So there's like a very also specific dynamic between the chemist or, or at least an importance in the chemistry between you and your partner, right? And if one of you is like having a really bad game, you know, how do you, um, you know, pull your partner out of that or even offset it in some way? Um, and so that, that definitely is different from uh, the soccer field. Um, yeah, I saw a question that just came in from Elisa. Yeah, um, about um, like co confidence and and playing eleven inside and how that's different. Um, and one of the other distinctions that I, for sure, like, I would say, okay, so football, you cannot play this game mad, in my opinion. So, for example someone in soccer i could play the anger and like frustration and getting like a bad foul or something would often like turn my focus to like being more physical or running harder or like put me in a different zone that really that could potentially really help me and i don't find that that works in football -y. um getting angry whether it's at yourself or the ref or your partner or the other team like doesn't seem to help my focus I, because I think a lot of for me at least because I don't have as much experience like playing competitive in this sport like this game is about about like joy and conf and like confidence and kind of having a little swag like a swagger about you um that you're like oh yeah I got that no no problem like um so yeah i hope that i hope that answered your question alicia what what about you erica what do you think um yeah i think the yeah, idea of confidence is an interesting one because i i also think about like our roles as defenders or attackers on the mm -hmm. soccer field and in foot volley you're you're required to do both right like mm -hmm. you can't plan where an attack is gonna come and because there are three passes that usually are made that means you could potentially be on defense or offense um you know any given point all throughout the game and so i think that like the confidence um is really required in both your defensive skills as well as your attacking skills um whereas potentially on the soccer field you might be really confident as a defender right and mm -hmm. not so much as like an attacker who scores goals so I think that there's this sort of like um, versatility that's um, that you're demanded of. Um, I think it's interesting that we both played center mid on the soccer field, and I'm I'm like for the first time making a link between oh maybe the versatility of playing in the center of the field right and having to attack and defend actually like has um, like contributed maybe to um, our experience or uh draw towards the sport in a way um could be i think also it's just that i like to touch the ball <laughs> to touch the ball like i always want to be around the ball so that's probably also why i like football it's just a lot of touches like you go out to play 11 aside you don't get nearly the amount of touches that you do when you play football league right very true um Okay, we are good on time. We got one more question before we're moving into um, uh, some other stuff. Actually, this one, that one kind of links into that I just saw come in, kind of links into what we were just talking about. So maybe we should we should touch on that. Mm -hmm. um, what was it? Um, the sec the second part of Alicia's question talks a little bit about you know the sport being male dominated. Um, how can the game grow for females? Um, yeah, I think one though that Angela, sorry, that Angela just posed. Oh, okay. Is football it's easier on the body than standard soccer? Would you recommend the game for players who don't play full field anymore due to previous injuries? 
personally, I think the sand is always easier on my body. Like when I go to play on the turf or on futsal, like my hips, my knees, my ankles, my joints, like not that old, you know, but like it hurts. Mm -hmm. And the sand is just so forgiving mm -hmm. on your joints. Um, not forgiving on your muscles. It will give you, it'll, it'll give you a workout. That's for sure. Um, and maybe we, hopefully we can touch a little bit later about, I saw something come in as well from about youth, um, and about like, how do you get started? Um, so let's, re let's remember to touch on that. I think. Um, yeah. And just to jump in also a little bit about like the physicality of foot volley, it's not a contact sport like soccer is right. And like, with soccer, as you get older, like the hits, right? Like actually leave a bit more of a mark on us. We can't bounce back as quickly if we really get like fouled hard on the field. And so that was also a really big change physically and mentally like, oh, I have no one like rushing me when I have the ball, right? Like sure, I just have one touch to make, right? But still there's like not that immediate pressure of another body or contact for that matter. So totally. I would say that it, it's a really great sport. There are players of all ages yep. um, who actually play. Um, so I would totally encourage those of you who are moving away from soccer to check out football. -y. Right. One of my, so one of my closest friends who I was really brought into the culture by, and you were inspired by as well, you met in Miami. Her name is Gisele, this, this wonderful Brazilian woman. Um, I think she's, she was in her late forties at that time, had just started playing and was just so, so committed and so, and I don't know, so brilliant. So, um, I just wanted to mm -hmm. shout out Gisele. <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, so here, let me, add, let me shift gears a little bit to talk about more of the like cultural aspects of the game. Um, so I'm, I'm curious um, about what it's like for you to be not only a female playing a predominantly male dominated sport, but also an American playing a, a Brazilian sport. How has that been for you? Um, yeah, I think, I think the, this is like what comes up, I think the most, especially when, I mean, all, all the time, but I think to me, the, the example that, is, that is best, that I can best use here is around tournament play. Um, so a lot of the tournaments are organized by Brazilian men. And um, generally there is a, like they categorize the divisions, right? There's a women's division, there's a men's division. And usually within the men's, there's many more men playing. Um, there's a beginning, intermediate, advanced level, um, and where I am in my playing, like ability um, and like trajectory, like I I have the ability to play at the level of some of the more intermediate men's teams, and I did that this last summer in the NFA tournaments um, in El Huntington Beach in San Diego. Um, I also wanted to participate in the women's division just to support and make sure that there were enough numbers, um, to have, you know, a viable competition. Um, and that was, I don't know, for some reason that was really hard. They like really hard for the organizers, organizers to wrap their head around. They like did not want me to compete in both. Um, you know, that tournament that I, that was a huge highlight for me in Barcelona, there were, there were men's teams from all around the world, Holland and Germany and, and Paraguay and Argentina and Brazil and Spain, all these, Israel, all these places. And then there were four female athletes. And the reason, the reason that was given as to why they're like, we couldn't have just have an American team, an Italian team, you know, representing countries like the men did was because the level wasn't good enough. And 
um you know as as we all know like it's really hard i think it's it's really challenging without the structure um of competition of leagues um to encourage women to get involved um they have to be absolutely obsessed with the sport like i am to just keep pushing and pushing and carve a way for myself or for themselves mm -hmm. um and yeah that's kind of what led to us me wanting to do a tournament in santa cruz um was because like i can't just continue to complain about this stuff like of seeing this um over and over being really really frustrated like i want to create something myself so that was but again that like it wasn't as there weren't as many women as i would have liked um it's a huge challenge um Yeah. yeah. I, I feel as though um, in my, uh, you know, shorter football league career, on the one hand, it's kind of exciting, right, to be sort of at the forefront, right, of women, like, you know, playing the sport, right? Like, it's, it's not that popular, right? Like, and so somehow that creates more opportunities in a way, right, because we are paving the way, right? Like, the there is no door be, because you know women just haven't been even really a part of i guess the room right and and so in that way there it feels like a freedom and it feels kind of like um this exciting element to it but also in tandem with that there there feels like we bump up against right time and time again sort of like the dynamics of um like being the only women in a male dominated sport right in such that the men who are playing the sport like um are kind of um dictating the rules and or um expressing resistance um to um ch change within the sport right and expansion of the sport um and so it, it's kind of a mixed bag in that way you know, is something that I've experienced. And um, another thing that like, I, I think is one of like, my favorite parts about being um, one of one of the women playing football is, is the Brazilian culture, right? Um, everyone's speaking Portuguese, right? There's Portuguese, there, there's Brazilian food, there's Brazilian music, right? It is almost like a complete immersion like brazil comes to the court right even if we're in the u.s and um in that way it's really cool because it does feel similar to soccer like it's a universal language right like if you play if you're willing to learn um there is an open invitation right and you are automatically part of this you know community without even really knowing anyone per on a personal level right um and yet there's like there is sort of like um the like uh, the not knowing of like um where it, where it may go right i mean the uncertainty of like the opportunities moving forward um and, and really forces us to like actually take control of what those opportunities look like right? because they're not being made for us right so what you said about about like it being exciting because you, you're one of the only ones like I was thinking about um so sometimes when we train up at Cal up, up on campus and there's these volleyball you know the Cal volleyball players that come down they're like you guys are amazing like are you guys you guys in competitions like are you guys the best or something and I was like yeah you guys want to form a team right now you're second best like, <laughs> like so, so. If you want to get out there, like the world is your oyster, come play with us. Like we're we're totally down. So um, and then uh, I can't remember what I was going to say after that, but there was something else that might come back up again. Um, yeah. So I guess um, in terms of um, just 
going going further into like the experiences we've had as women in the sport um you know you mentioned Giselle being you know one of the women who is in her 40s i think late 40s maybe like playing the sport um but also there are some like pretty major players in brazil who are women um and um, one of them actually came out in 2019. Leah actually coordinated her to visit and to give a whole week worth of trainings to, um, to players in the Bay Area leading up to the tournament in Santa Cruz. And that was like such a cool opportunity, um, I think for her and also for all of us. Um, and her name is Josie. Um, and, and so, um, I think just for me to like be exposed like in such a, a personal way, right? Um, to a great, like a, a fellow great football player who is Brazilian, who literally is paving her way in Brazil, right? And like leading trainings and also just training with a lot of men in Brazil all the time um, is like, a way in which I feel like the sport is growing for women um, and, and the network, right, is expanding. Um, and, I, and I also like recognize she, like it is a full-time job, right? Like, mm -hmm. I don't even know what she does professionally. Mm -hmm. It's football, it's football like, yeah, it's she football. does, yeah, yeah. Right. So I'm wondering if you can speak a little bit too to just like what it would actually take to be professional, what it does take to be professional, because, you know, you have been to Brazil and you also, so like, um, another major player um, is Natalia. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. So just, just to speak a little bit about like what's required. Yeah. Oh, I remember what I was going to say about the community aspect. Like you were talking about, like, you can just hop, I can't tell you how many times, like, by being able to show up and like to like I know football I can play football you can show up at a court and definitely hop in in Brazil or Israel yeah it's so that's that's really lovely in terms of what it takes like okay so Josie she's it was so awesome to see her so there's in the Bay Area there's a couple different groups there's like our group which is a lot um of you know American born players and then there's another group that is on the on the peninsula side of the bay, um, and we don't we mix sometimes, but since we're kind of far apart, we're not on a regular basis, um, and they're mostly Brazilian, and we also offered tr trainings. Josie also offered trainings to that group, and to see her command, like the attention of these full grown Brazilian men. Um, was something to behold like she is she is a super direct strong tell it like it is um with like woman so um that was that was really cool Josie's in order to for Josie to make this her full-time job she says yes to everything football -y. she'll she travels all the time she gives trainings back to back to back to back to back um plays in all of the tournaments she's also very active on social media um which can be a full you know a full-time thing and i think in talking about um like natalia who's one of one of the best players if not the best player in the world female on the female side like her full-time job is really like she's a social media influencer um so in terms of like what would it take to be sponsored or professional? Um, it would be a grind. And um, yeah, like really, like probably offering trainings, hustling, like going, trying to do it with youth clubs and stuff like that, which I think would be amazing. I would love to do that. Again, this is in a non COVID world. Um, and, and then also I would have to like, one would have to spend a lot of time, I think, promote self-promoting on social media, mm -hmm. um, which is not my, is not my thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. And it also just seems like what's implied here too, is that like, it would be that much more of a hustle here in the U S because the, 
I mean, the the um, population or the demographics like just aren't here, right? Like it, because it's not American culture, right? Like um, it, you're not tapping into like the same just like wealth of, you know, right. talent, interest, right? Uh, that you, than you would be in Brazil. Like you actually could probably <laughs> much more easily do this as a profession in Brazil than here. Probably. In Right. Probably, yeah. Yeah, as niche as, as football is in Brazil, it's much like, it's n it's nothing here, here. so. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, I think we have, we have time for, we have a couple more ooh, questions. And then I wanted to, maybe this one we can save, like, what would you like to see for the future of the game? We can save that for the very last. You want to do some questions, Erica? Yeah, sure. Um, let's see. Maybe we can talk a little bit just about youth opportunities. I feel like that's mm -hmm. a really important one to circle back to. So um, what would you say about, you know, um, if I can find it in the chat, um, is football available for youth? Um, and I guess just youth opportunities in general. Um that on it's it's crazy because like if it were going to be i feel like it would literally be up to us to do to make it available and as erica said like she just graduated from school she is a has a full-time profession um i'm working full-time with scores um this was definitely a huge passion project for me while you know everyone was running around maskless um <laughs> so when I think when things calm down I think it'll all pick things back up again and try to reach out to local clubs to see if it's something that they want to do um but it's it's to like soccer clubs right to do as like a fun team building activity kind of thing um or as a clinic that we put on um the day before a tournament that we have so the I would say that the the options are pretty limited, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Yeah. Um, let's see, I think there was another question in here about um, just if we've stopped training because of the pandemic, is this is the group still running is one of the questions. I mean, I can I can just answer that quickly. Yeah. Um, we, we were being pretty mindful just around like the bubbles and the pods and stuff. And so Leah and I kind of um, agreed to be in a training pod with each other. Um, so we were able to train a little bit, but now um, we're not living in the same city. And so it's just a bit difficult. We're about um, an hour and a half away from each other. So um, the group in and of itself of which we're a part of, which is, I mean, kind of ranges from around five to 10, 15 people, um, kind of that come in and out, many of whom are Brazilian. Um, it hasn't really been gathering in those numbers just because of the pandemic. Um, so unfortunately, we're pretty limited during this time. Um, there's a personal question in the chat about Yuri. <laughs> Somehow I'm not surprised he is making his way into this talk. And Yuri is a legend and an amazing are. person. So the question is, Yuri still playing football -y consistently? Since the start of the pandemic, no. Mm -hmm. No, he's been being really, really uh, mindful and careful. Mm -hmm. So yeah, he's he's been out for a little bit little while I mean no literally no football games have really happened since since March and it's it's heartbreaking as I was telling Erica as we were preparing for this we were just starting to talk about it and we were talk touching back on you know Santa Cruz the tournament that happened last year and like thinking back to like where I was and how much football was like a part of the four at the four of my brain all the time and now it just seems like a dream um so we are um until then I you know are kicking the ball against the wall and juggling by ourselves <laughs> doing what we can so 
so sad. Um, there's another question about San Diego from Christine. Mm -hmm. um, just joining, haven't gotten into this as much. Any groups in San Diego is the question. And I think that you may know more um, than I do because I, um, yeah. yeah. No, the group in San Diego is big and they actually, they have a much more established, like, um, they have like a club where they do trainings they do in like you know certain days of the week i think they're football -y club football -y club i would look up football -y club on instagram i can i'm actually on my phone right now so i can't look but um football -y club and they have a couple different um what's it called locations there's one in rio there's one in portugal and there's one in san diego and the, they're great guys they're really really Gentiboa, good people. <laughs> um, awesome. And then uh, Shira is asking another question about how do you go about starting a tournament um, specifically for women? Um, oh. Just in accelerating the scene for girls in Israel. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I was in Israel last year for about two weeks. Um, sh yeah, Shira, definitely hit me up on Instagram. We got to connect. And I, there was a lot of girls that played. It's, I mean, way more girls that played than here. And, and it was so, this was a really interesting thing too. I, I mean, in, in, talking about dynamics between men and women, because the, the league there is actually quite established. And I remember I'm pretty, I was, I'm close friends with, um, uh, a guy who was like involved in the organizing and I happened to, I was just with him and on our way to lunch and they stopped at this like meeting this like conference of all the you know the, the, the decision makers and they're just having lunch and talking about how we're going to get this how they're going to get this done and at the end of the meeting I was like I have, I have a question <laughs> why are there no women here <laughs> and they're all just like <laughs> like think, think. Oh. <laughs> um and there and it was interesting because the line that I got from a lot of men was like that the women don't really want to be involved and they just want us to do it for them and um I just really encourage people the girls that I met there to just not wait for them don't wait, like you, we have to create our own thing. Like whatever you want it to be, like we can create it. So I think one of the huge things, it seemed like there was a lot of numbers. I think getting the women on the same page and being like, we don't care about, you know, doing it in front of all of those people, right in front of Frischmans, whatever, like, that doesn't have anything to do with what we're doing right now. If, if the goal is just to have a women's tournament, like just set it up on, you go set up a net, start a WhatsApp groups, go set up a net, be like, I'm bringing the sandwiches, you bring the, the music and the, the speaker, like I'll bring my umbrella, I'll bring the, the you bring the shit chairs, you know what I mean? Like it doesn't have to be that complicated. Mm -hmm. um, and you don't really need sponsors you don't need sponsors if if what you're doing it for is to have to enjoy and to join each other's company now if you want to do it for competition and money then i don't know you gotta you gotta get the on social media or instagram or i don't really know actually or have have people throw money into the hat to start with yeah, right or that. It feels like there's, this is such like a, a sport of the people. It's not an elite sport. You really only need like a net and a ball and some lines that you could even draw in the sand, right? Like you don't need that much. And I think that's the beauty of it too. Um, and there, I mean, it's a learning process along the way, right? You try it once, you see what worked, what didn't work, you assess, you regroup, you try it again, right? Once you kind of re regenerate, recoup, right? From the first experience, cause that it takes so much out of you. So I would say that like mm -hmm. community and support is like number one in organizing mm -hmm. anything, right? To just like feel like you can depend on other people to 
you know, help out in specific ways, like to have specific asks for people that, you know, you can count on, um, yeah. and go from there. That's so true. The, the number one being the relationships, um, because yeah. And, and Shira, maybe you'll know, I'm not sure if you were in Tel Aviv or not, but I, I, I sense that there was something going on under the surface um, in terms of like, a sh yeah, not having like a real big buy-in for the, for the community um, with the women. It was, it, there was something going on. Um, that was just my spidey sense. Um, but yeah. Um, we have a couple more minutes. Um, one final question from Alicia. We also have just the question of what we would like to see for the, oh, yeah. of the game. Um, maybe we can just go ahead and ask our answer. Yeah. Like the future, the hope of the sport, you know, any quick thoughts before Alicia asks us one final question. Actually, that, that is my question. <laughs> you guys are on top of it. So why don't you go ahead first, Erica? Um, I guess I would love to just see more um, women in particular playing the sport, right? I mean, it feels like a pretty natural um, progression after field play is like further behind, um, you know, a player. It's like the 11 aside just feels like that field is just bigger and bigger, right? The longer um, time has passed since playing um, um, in that way. And so, you know, post-college soccer um, players, um, I know some of them have even pursued beach soccer, you know, mm -hmm. this would be like, maybe, um, maybe the sport can sort of, or maybe the football community can partner with the beach soccer community. I know those ties exist in Santa Cruz, but also in other places, um, but obviously just to see the sport grow is going to create more opportunities um, for more courts, like for more mm -hmm. courts to be built. Like half the time, it's a struggle for space. I think we all know this, even as soccer players in the Bay Area, right? Like we have to like fight tooth and nail to just get, um, you know, a part of the field to practice on, right? And the same is true only a hundred times worse, I think for the like um, football community on sand courts. Um, with the uh, with the volleyball community, um, and and ultimately it would be great to get um, more of a Brazilian American um, like um, pathway or bridge going right. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just that like that's where so much of the talent and the knowledge of the game um, uh, you know lives, and so mm -hmm. to get more access right to that um that knowledge and those players um you know vice versa to fly them out here for us to go there right would be super cool so that's my my answer what about you those are such great points i think um just talking about this is really it's it's crazy it's really time i'm doing time travel to it to before the pandemic when this was like so much more front of front of mind but I just remember feeling like, you know, I'm, all, you know, I'm already in my thirties, right? I'm all, like, I don't, and there's no one coming up that's younger than me, that's American, that's younger than the group that we play with, that's American, that's really playing this sport, which is like, it would be such a shame that on like our watch or whatever, um, the no one else starts to play, like that can't happen. Um, so I think, just really creating pathways for people to play um, is really important. And then what you said about the bridge between Brazil and here, because as I started to get, we started to get more and more competitive and wanting to learn more than just like, I got it over the net, <laughs> right? Because that's how it is for a long time. It takes a long time to learn. Um, is like, we, we have, we've just been figuring it out. Like I always call that we, we play like street football -y, right? Like we're just, the ball comes over and I'm like, actually, why don't you move a little bit here? Because I think the way that I'm receiving, like, 
we just talk it out. We figure out what works. We do it over and over again. And um, we make adjustments. So we're our own coaches, but to be able to have, you know, um, people that have a lot of ex- a lot more experience than than you or I do to be able to help with um, training and coaching and tactics and technique and all that stuff, besides just figuring it out over and over and over again, I think would would really take um, the more competitive and serious uh, players to the next level. Thank you so much, um, Leah and Erica. That was so great. I didn't know much about foot and volley. Now I feel like I can actually <laughs> talk about it. I don't even know if I could ever get the ball over the net. That's a whole nother subject. Um, I just want to thank everyone in the audience too for joining us. America Scores Bay Area is um, really proud of the summit and putting it on. So this is great. Appreciate your time and energy with the session. Tomorrow morning, we will start with Leslie Osborne, and that should be a really great session also. We'd like to thank our sponsors, Women in Soccer. Please sign up, free membership. And Goal 5, thank you so much for providing one lucky person in the audience with a fabulous product giveaway. We're not sure what it is, but um, it'll be great. Um, anyway, thank you so much from America Scores Bay Area and hope to see you for the rest of the week. We have three more days left. Thank you. Have a really wonderful day and stay safe. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Cool. <laughs> Thanks, guys. How do you feel? Everybody, feel like I got more comfortable as it went on. <laughs> yeah, you seemed comfortable the whole time, actually. Okay, yeah, the whole time. There was cool. one question we didn't get to. This is from Kevin. I just noticed that. <laughs> Kevin is <laughs> I love Kevin. Does one become fluent in Portuguese once you pick up foot volley? We should have. I should have answered that. I saw it. I slipped my mind. We should have said yes. I'm actually (laughs) fluent completely, having started, and I'm not. No, no, I'm not. It's a joke. Yeah. Okay. Um, I I just uh, thank you for your time. I just we after the session, we just wanted to say like a personal thank you and and just see how you felt and. We're hoping to improve each session and, and just want your feedback. Quick, I mean, Alicia will send formal, like a formal feedback form and everything. But yeah, like if there's anything we can do to make it better, please let us know. Uh, I mean, my experience was great. I, uh, I don't know how it could have been made better. I felt like the, the space was really nicely introduced by Alicia in the beginning um, and also closed out by by Alicia. So um, I feel really good about the experience. I, I appreciate you guys inviting us to do this talk. Cool. Yeah. Thank, yeah. Thank you so much. It was really nice. And thank you for kind of allowing us to just have a conversation like that. That was, uh, I really appreciate the, um, I don't know what to call it, but the, the, just get, being able to do, to do it in that format really natural.